Welcome to Growing Hope with Katherine Lang, coming to you from the rolling hills of Big Spring Valley in beautiful Alabama. Katherine Lang offers words of encouragement and hope to help grow up lives boldly pursuing peace and joy. Katherine seeks out the rainbows of life while sharing her lollipops of encouragement along her journey. Here on Growing Hope, she features words to help hope and grow courage, all while challenging herself and listeners to radical choices and bold purpose. This is Growing Hope with Katherine Lang, where we are growing hearts open to pursue the extraordinary. And now, here's your host, Katherine Lang. Hello and welcome to Growing Hope Radio. I am Katherine Lang, your Rainbows and Lollipops host. And today, I am working out my way to be courageous, even if I struggle with saying the word. (laughs) See, courage is not just about taking up arms against the enemy. Or, Or maybe it really is about taking up arms against the enemy. See, even in the little things, the truth is that I have to stand against the enemy, whether the enemy is something major or something minor. The enemy comes in so many shapes and forms, and no matter what size, it takes courage in my life, in my unique journey to to walk out against the enemy. And courage will not always look the same, even when I face it from day to day. And especially not when others are facing it down because we are all unique. And that means we follow a unique path. And yes, that also means that courage will look different and unique in each of our lives. I'll be talking with C.A. Marks from Moxie Beautiful in just a little bit about courage and how she sees how it's played out in her life. But first, the he said, she said segment of the show, because today my husband threw down the subject of books. And since I'm an author and I love words, I thought it would be a good topic to share. I will say that writing my first book, or at least sharing the words that I wrote with others, it took a massive amount of courage. And each additional word that I share, it takes even more courage because I'm exposing a little more of myself to you and ultimately to me. Because I think we lie to ourselves most of all. Books, they really are good for whatever might be ailing you. Now it's time for He Said, She Said. Break it down. And this week's, he said, she said, books. I know that uh, books are a big deal for you as a writer, uh, growing up as a reader. Uh, There was a period of time, I remember in elementary uh, school, when every year we would sell books and uh, have the opportunity to buy books. And and really, that's the only time that I read growing up unless I had to. Wow. See, I can't even imagine that because I, I have always been a very avid reader and would finish what I had available and then move on to the gazillion books that my mom had. And uh, and I'm glad that that's something that the, the boys have grown up doing and that they read like they read. But I tell you, the, we went to Craft Content in Nashville and the keynote address, the keynote speaker said he wasn't a reader, but that he was challenging himself to read a fiction and a nonfiction a week. And I, I that so convicted me because even though I was a very big reader, most of my life, I stopped after we started having kids, mainly because, you know me, once I get into a book, I kind of ignore the rest of the world. <laughs> mm-hmm. Food, crying children, <laughs> sleeping. Until the book is done, and then, hey, you know, I can go back to reality. But I've been working on that, and uh, I have found that I enjoy 
the reading again. Nonfiction is a little tougher for me to get through, but as long as I make time and choose to read, I do. Um, and that's really what it comes down to. Do I choose to read or do I choose to spend that time elsewhere? But I think it's important that we read. Oh, I agree. And that's part of the reason that I threw that in. There's lots of different kind of books out there. I wouldn't say that I would want to read any different kind of book. Uh, most of what I've read in recent times is uh, certain particular studies. Uh, I, I like them better when they're in a at least a chapter format and then maybe questions after that, not where it's necessarily broken up all the way through it because that's more of a study than a reading. But uh, then reading to the boys when they were growing up and now with Spencer where we read nightly and I get to enjoy all of the third and fourth grade level <laughs> mystery books at a uh, hundred pages, ten chapters each and you know, we split it up over two days and I I like it more in a, a shorter format. I, I'm not gonna read it 2,500 page book. I, I'm just not going to do it. No, I'm... That's not my thing. I'm, I'm trying to read a trilogy right now, and I can't even get through the first book. <laughs> so, so I'm beginning to, to, to question my ability to get through the tr trilogy, but I find sometimes that once I commit to reading, and maybe that's why I, I get so engrossed in the book, because once I commit to reading, I'm going to finish it. It's giving myself the permission to do it. And maybe if I work on my consistency daily and just give myself permission each day to do a little bit of it and then follow through, right. I won't have to lose myself in the book. And and that's how I do most books anyway. There's a certain amount of time and, you know, I'm, I've got to be done with it for then because I'm tired of reading it. I begin to get disinterested even if I really enjoy the book. Huh. There you go. So do make time for reading because reading is valuable. And make time for fiction and nonfiction because they work different parts of your brain. I agree. What do you say? Share your thoughts, opinions, or questions by emailing radio at katherinelang.com and include he said, she said in the subject line. What what if he's if the Holy Spirit has drawn him and he's he draws out of you that so shall your word be that goes forth out of your mouth you'll not return to him void if you leave you that way you're leaving you out of the equation it's not you speaking it's the Holy Spirit speaking through you and accomplish either accomplish what it was you may not see it but it will accomplish what he pleases and, and not return to you void. okay to him, to him void. Now that's that's taking Isaiah's I think it is fifty five fifty five eleven and it's it's saying what I believe that he's saying in the in the New Testament because he wants the covenant to allow him to speak through you. You're the conduit work version thing that you mentioned. That he the Holy Spirit lives in you. I don't right. believe you comforted by sending the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Believing he's living in you then allowing his word not you to tamper with it but let it flow out because he's drawn that person to you and he knows what they need to hear uh -huh. and so shall his word be that flows out of your mouth and I'll be because he told you also he'll bring to your remembrance the things that you need to say but the only way he can bring it to your remembrance is if you've exposed yourself to it I mean you know see I implant the word in you <laughs> osmosis uh, that that to me that's where some of the, the fallacy is we don't we don't study the word enough to have it in us so that when he wants to use it he wouldn't have to manufacture it you know reading offers me value in growing up in becoming what i am designed to be and the most important thing that i can choose to read is scripture my dad reminded me of that during our latest Back Porch chat, that if God is going to recall the words and he's going to bring me into remembrance of the words, 
then I have to have invested in putting the words into my eyes and into my ears so that they can begin to grow up in my heart. Everything that I choose to put into me will either assist me in the journey and help me with growing up my courage or it will hinder that course of action that I desire. I have to be aware of what I am choosing if I'm going to get the better results that I desire. And Keith reminded me in our He Said, She Said segment that it comes down to just three basic steps. All of it. One, do a little bit. Two, follow through with the actions. And three, be consistent with the choices. It's not complicated. It's really not even all that difficult. It's just that it's up to me. I have to choose. And sometimes, most of the time, many times, I struggle to make that choice. To me, that's where courage plays the most important part for my journey in just making the right choice. Now, Growing Hope Radio is going to take a quick break, but when we come back, I'm going to be chatting with C.A. Marks of MoxieBeautiful.com about courage, and I'm going to be sharing some of my own struggles in trying to live out the courageous life that I know I am designed to live out. I can do it. I just have to make the choice. Growing Hope Radio will be back after these quick messages. The sound of the door unlocking made her heart speed up. Her reasonable mind told her there was nothing on the other side, but reason had lost its argument long ago. It was time to face the past, no matter how much she wanted to run. Run, the pulse-quickening first novel in the Big Spring series from Catherine C. Lang. Don't look back. Get it today in paperback or ebook at Amazon.com or CatherineLang.com. Run. Are you ready to break out of the ordinary into the extraordinary? Did you know that you were designed on purpose for a purpose and that your purpose is unique in all the world? Place and Purpose offers four questions to begin unlocking your uniqueness and then creating a plan to pursue your purpose with boldness. Order your copy by visiting www.catherinelang.com forward slash books. R&D Computer Solutions, serving all your computer needs. We provide low-cost hosting options, complete website development, and online troubleshooting service. No matter what your needs, the staff at R&D Computer Solutions will be there to help you find the answer. Visit www.rdcss.com to learn more about R&D Computer Services, a family-owned and Christian-run quality computer business. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. Welcome back to Growing Hope Radio. And before the break, I shared a quick little talk with my husband about the power of books and the power of reading. And also with my dad about the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling in me. Now that is a lot of power that's already driving my day. So I should be the bravest person on the planet. And yet... I still find myself wallowing around in stuff that is less than courageous. And some of it's downright cowardly. Now, I buckled down last week after much reminding and much refocusing. And during my chat, was continued to see the value of stepping out. Sometimes into the unknown and sometimes into the, I've never done it that way before. Because courage comes in all shapes and all sizes. And CA helped me begin to find my ways to grow up courage for my life. So you're courageous. That's why I wanted to talk to you. Okay. Do you consider yourself courageous? Not at all. Even though you joined the military, even though you have taken on this challenge of the CrossFit, even though you do things that you wouldn't normally do or like to do or want to do. You don't think that's courageous? No. (laughs) Well, how do you define courage? I define courage, and it was actually defined for me one time when, and I'm just going to be honest here. I mean, it, it was defined, I heard it defined like this, doing something when you're afraid and doing it anyway. 
doing it anyway, even though you're afraid. So that's how I define courage, I guess. And I think that's why I consider you courageous because you don't always strike me as the bold extrovert. <clears throat> and yet you take on challenges that require being bold and being extroverted. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't consider myself bold either, either, but I feel like I'm bold on the inside, if that makes any sense. You know, I'm just not, I know people that are like bold on the outside. They just have a, when they walk into a room, they just have this overwhelming personality and you can tell they are in the room. Right. Like JQ. Yes. JQ yes. is a perfect example. Or my friend Cameron, you know, you've met Cameron before. Yes. yes. And they just come in, you know, full bear, you know, full barrel loaded, you know, they just boom, they're there. And to me, it's like, I, I watch that, and I'm like, wow, I wish I could be like that. <laughs> but I can't. No, and you shouldn't, because that's not who right. you are. Your courage right. is a, you're, 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 bold, you're bold, but you're subtle in your boldness. When you step into a group that you don't know, and you talk to people that you don't know, even though, you're, like I said, you're, you're naturally introverted, and that's not your comfort zone, that is bold. And I think it's just come with age and experience as well. I know when I was at, when I was in high school, oh my gosh, I was so scared and timid and shy and bashful. I would walk, you know, with my books in my hands, my hand, with my head looking down at the ground. I wouldn't look at anybody because I didn't, I didn't want anybody looking at me and talking to me. I mean, I hear all these people with these anxiety issues now and I think, you know, and I understand that. You know, but the older I've gotten and the more experiences that I've been through, and I've been through quite a few, and I'm, and none of them have killed me. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, well, all right, then let's try something else. Not that I'm trying to, you know, do that, but. So, so you would be a believer of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and I, when I first heard that, it was like in some movie or something. I thought, oh, that's kind of rokey doke. You know, but I believe it now. Yeah, I believe it. When do you think you are courageous? When do you think courage comes out for you? Again, when I'm trying to do something that I'm afraid of doing and I do it anyway, I can give you several examples right off the top of my head. When I had to send my son to military school, I was so afraid to do that. But I had to do what was best for him. Not was not what not what was best for me, but was about what was best for him. That was a very scary decision to make. The other wait, one wait, is when my it? husband died. Of course, I really didn't have a choice in that. Well, I guess I did have a choice. I could have given up. I could have given up and not gotten back up from that. I could have, I could have wallowed down in self pity and you know ran home to whatever. Um, or, or and then there's the silly stuff like CrossFit. You know, <laughs> to me that I walk in there and I see that workout written on the board, and I've said this before. I see that workout written on the board. I'm like, oh, man, I don't know if I can do that or not. But then 45 minutes later, I've, I've left the workout having done it or, or a scaled version of it. And when I do that, when I say, oh, I don't think I can do it, and then I go ahead and try, I attempt it, and then I have done it, that's what builds that courage up. You know, it's kind of like a reserve. You build it up and build it up. It's like, oh, well, and then you can look back on what you have done and what you've accomplished. So it's not so scary in the future. Fair enough. Fair Makes enough. sense. Yeah. And I like that you compared major things in your life, like sending your son to military school and also having a, your spouse die. I mean, that's huge. And like you said, many people just, uh, they give up. They just, they crumble under that pressure. And then there's CrossFit because I think we do courage a lot like we do sin, and there's big sins, and there's little sins, and there's big courage, and there's little courage, without understanding that every ounce of courage grows, it makes us stronger. Every ounce of courage that we put into our lives makes us stronger. So it's important to recognize that, yes, even those little things are courage. They're courageous. They make you more than you would have been had you not done it. And I don't think it's anything that comes from me, from within. I also get, a, I gain a lot of courage from other people, watching other people and see how they handle things and they go through things. And, and even when I'm talking to someone, 
and you've been a good example of this. I'm just, we're just chit chatting and you'll say something back to me. And I'm like, Oh, I never thought of it that way. But then I'll sit on that and I'll mull that over and I'll mull that over. And it gives me a new perspective, something that I've never thought about before, but I've been open enough to willing to receive it and think about it. And then hmm, maybe, maybe I could do that or try it that way or think about it a different way. So I get a lot of it from other people too. I don't think it's anything. I don't think it's anything that comes from within me myself. I think it's an outside influence and a higher power and all of that. I think you have to reach out and seek it out, ask for it, and then be willing to receive it. Yeah. I think that that's, that's probably the biggest key is you have to be willing to receive. I can't force it on you. Right. Lord, I can't even force it on myself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> If if I'm not and and it it's almost it it's an honesty that's required. Absolutely. Um, I know that uh, I was doing a recording. I was doing my speaker page. I was working on my speaker page, and I had to do a little little demo video uh, from one of my presentations that I gave a couple of years ago. And looking at myself in that presentation, and look and forcing myself to allow people to take pictures of me, and seeing those pictures keeps me from being dishonest with myself yes, because I can't look at that image and go, Hey, everything's fine <laughs> because right. I can look at the the image and go, no, probably not so fine. We might need to get a little more invested. And that honesty is courage in and of itself. Yes, it is. Absolutely. It is. Um, there, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, there's a, there's a, I don't know what term you phrase. I don't know if it's an acronym or there's a, you know, a certain kind of term for it, but the how is honesty, openness and willingness. Ooh. So yeah, I didn't, that didn't come from me. I heard that from somebody else. So I like that. <laughs> quick, find a piece of paper and write that down. Honesty, and to me, and to me if there, look, if you're not growing, then you're stuck somewhere. And I don't think we ever reached point in our lives we're like okay well I'm done I'm happy right where I am (laughs) don't you think you want to always be challenged and don't you always want to go through something well maybe you don't want to but when you do go through it you are a different person and I always want to keep growing and learning and experiencing now granted it might not be fun but it makes me the person I am today well it's interesting that you brought that up because I was just sharing with somebody I was retweeting something uh, similar to what you just said, and I made the point that if you're not growing, you're not living. Absolutely. Because only thing, if, if anything that's alive today is growing. And so those challenges that we go through are that we choose to go through. You know, I choose to do National Novel Writing Month because it challenges yes, me. I love, yes, <laughs> I love that you say we choose to do this. And ultimately, you choose everything. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I was at Craft Content in Nashville in April, and John Michael Morgan said that you are exactly where you want to be. Yeah. And that hurt my feelings. <laughs> well, no, and it's true, though. It's Well, it's like when my husband died, and I, people were like, oh, you're so strong. I can't. Uh, how did you do it? I can't believe you're so strong, and you did this. And, I'm, and I, told, I remember telling one person. I said, well, I really didn't have a choice. And they looked right back at me, square in my eyes, and they said, yes, you did. You had a choice. You could have done this or you could have caved and you could have, you know, there's a lot of other choices that I could have made. And I was like, oh, and I thought about that. And I thought, oh, they're right. I could have given up. I could have, I could have gone down a whole different road. Yeah. And it could be a whole lot worse, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, there, you're right. It is a choice. And, and he, him saying you're exactly where you wanted to be, required me to be honest about the choices I was making, about the investments that I was making through those choices. And even even today, you know, so many months later, I'm still struggling to be courageous enough to make the choices that will create the change. Even though I want the change, I don't want it so much that I want to be uncomfortable. Right. Even though I'm uncomfortable where I am. But this is familiar uncomfortable. <laughs> right? 
Uh, no, I say that because I, I've been there. I've done that. I get comfortable. and I don't smell the stinkiness anymore because I've been sitting in it for so long. You know what I'm saying? I get it. I get it. Okay. You're, telling, you're telling me I need to go <laughs> so take a shower. You've got to make that choice to be courageous and do something different to get out of it. I Yeah. I You know, I you don't think about it, though. It's a familiar uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because it's a familiar uncomfortable, it's comfortable. It's like wearing shoes that are too small because they're your favorite shoes and you've always had those shoes and you want to keep those shoes. Or worse, your pants have gotten too small and you want to keep those pants because you've always had those pants and so you just you get those little elastic button yeah. <laughs> you know whatever it takes to 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 make you think you're comfortable in your uncomfortableness right I, and I, I think that that's where I got until this past weekend and there was just it was just one thing after another after another after another and then it ended this morning I was reading in Haggai of all places the scripture said the, that the people were suffering. It was God talking to Israel, and he said, y'all are suffering. Y'all don't have enough. Y'all are in a bad, uncomfortable place because you let my temple go to waste. And I just kind of went, ow, because, you know, now we are his temple. And mm -hmm. it was just kind of a, it was just a real hard slap in the butt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that... I am where I am because I'm not taking responsibility for who and whose I am. So now I got to get cur cur courageous enough. Jane, it could just be little things in the beginning, just small things sometimes. It takes just as much courage to do little things as it does. I, absolutely, because yes, ma'am, because <laughs> I'd rather have a piece of chocolate than a salad. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we don't think about it. Uh, we get we get to the like you said a place of familiar uncomfortable and we don't recognize the options that are before us because we've never tried those options thank you for joining me today and i will share it's moxie beautiful yes moxiebeautiful.com and what do you write about a little bit of grit a little bit of glamour and a charmingly bold gen x blogger that i am <laughs> see you are bold <laughs> How do I become courageous? C.A. Mark shared her simple tips for growing up courage uh, with honesty, with openness, and with willingness. I have to be honest about where I am. I have to be open to what is happening and what will happen, and I have to be willing to take a chance. Being courageous is not always about stepping out onto a physical battlefield. Sometimes the battlefield is in the mind or in the heart. But it is about moving beyond my comfort zone. It is about moving towards something more than I am or about letting go of something that is weighing me down. Both ends of the journey will require equal amounts of courage. The more I hear it, the more I want to be courageous. But I know that I need to keep hearing it and I have to keep sharing it if I'm going to live out that courage. Like so many things in my life, in truth, like all things in my life, courage is simply a choice. And if I want to be in the place of making the better choice, of pushing my way up and out of the trap of familiar, then I have to surround myself with the words of inspiration and hope that will grow up the courage I need to take one more step. Thanks so much to C.A. Marks for chatting with me. Now, you be sure to visit www.moxiebeautiful.com to learn more about her boldness because her boldness will encourage you. I guarantee it. Growing Hope Radio needs to take another quick break. But when we come back, I'm going to be digging a little deeper into how to break this trap of familiar because it's easy to get caught up in it. That place of familiar uncomfortable that we want to convince ourselves is comfort an ugly place to be and it will keep us from ever reaching out to the potential that we're called to live out i've been there i'm still working my way out of there i know that i have to make the choice for courage if i'm gonna be in that bold life 
Growing Hope Radio. We'll be right back. Christian Women Affiliate is a free community for Christian women who seek to be all that God has called them to be, with many affordable services, including radio and webinar hosting and an outstanding review crew. You have many exciting opportunities for promoting your message. Join Christian Women Affiliate today and make quality connections that lead to mentoring and resources that complement your calling and impact our world. Visit ChristianWomenAffiliate.com today. I have a secret. Actually, I have eight secrets, and I'm going to share them with you. Hi, I'm Catherine Lang, and I am the Husband Whisperer. I've learned the secrets for having the perfect spouse. The Husband Whisperer by Catherine C. Lang. Available at most online bookstores, or you can purchase your copy by visiting www.catherinelang.com slash books. Hello, you are back with Growing Hope Radio, where this week I, Catherine Lang, your rainbows and lollipops host, I continue on a journey to build courage in my life and for my life. I've always been a bit bold in my actions and my attitude. I blame it on being so stubborn. But don't you dare tell my husband I just admitted to being stubborn. So far, I've refused to admit it to him. <laughs> I, I think he suspects. But that part of me, that stubbornness, has allowed me to stand up against forces that might have caused others to crack. It has also pushed me to do backflips off a bridge into the river below, but that is another story for another day. The point is that I have always been courageous about certain things in my life. But lately, I've noticed that my courage has failed me on many levels. And I've noticed that when courage fails me, then what tries to seep into that space that remains behind is worry and stress. And I don't like worry and stress in my life. After all, I am the Rainbows and Lollipops host for a reason. Worry and stress are not fun companions to have hanging around. I prefer hope and joy. But you will not have both residing together. Stress and worry do not associate with hope and joy. They can't be together. Maybe that's one of the reasons I'm so invested in growing up hope in my life and in yours as well, so that I don't have to deal with those other things. In all of my noticing, I have started to recognize a pattern that when I settle into a hole, when I find myself in a place of familiar uncomfortable, you know, that place where you aren't really happy where you are, but it's better than making the choices and taking the actions required for change. You just kind of, uh, and you kind of hang out there. When I find myself there, I settle there. And when I settle there, I don't nurture the courage that I need for my life. As a matter of fact, I don't nurture much of anything positive when I'm in that place. Darkness has a way of growing more darkness. But I guess that makes sense, given that encouragement and hope, that is to say light, grows up more of the same. Okay, I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to step up on my soapbox. Because I think that because of darkness, the way darkness has a way of growing darkness, I think this is one of the reasons that I so dislike daylight savings time. Because first and foremost, it does not save any daylight. <laughs> I read something recently that said only the government would cut off the top of a blanket and sew it onto the bottom of the blanket and then try to convince you that you have a longer blanket. But the worst part of daylight saving time for me is that it steals from my morning. I learned several years ago when researching practical proverbs in the chapter on rest that sunlight produces a chemical reaction in my body that helps my body to wake up. When daylight comes, the body naturally wants to wake up. But daylight saving time postpones when that happens. <laughs> so it makes it more difficult for people to get up and to get going. So I'm putting in my official vote for doing away with daylight saving time. 
There, enough of the rant. Let's get back to courage and how the darkness dampens my ability to grow courage. I get that it takes courage to stand against the darkness, but growing that courage, like growing most things, requires the light. If I'm going to live different, if I'm going to be different, then I have to grow up the courage that will get me there. I visited with C.A. Marks of moxiebeautiful.com recently, and she inspired me to move beyond my comfort zone, to pull myself up out of the familiar uncomfortable, out of that yuck, and to take the steps necessary to grow up courage. First, courage grows up in an honest place. I have to be honest with myself and with others if I'm going to walk out a courageous life. Second, courage grows up in and through relationships. I will not make it on my own, and that's okay. We are designed for relationships, after all, and we're stronger and we're better together. Third, courage grows up in an open heart. I have to be open to the bad choices I've made and to the choices I'm going to need to make. And I have to be open to the guidance and wisdom of those around me to help me recognize both. Fourth, courage grows up when it's something more than self. Quite frankly, selfishness can never be courageous. Fifth, courage grows up when actions are taken. It is movement beyond where I am to where I want to be. Courage takes action. Courage doesn't happen by accident. Courage doesn't happen by chance. Courage is a deliberate choice to face down fear and to move forward despite what fear is saying. It's simply doing it even when you're afraid of what lies behind, of what lies beneath, or of what lies beyond. Courage is facing down that fear. Fear is just false evidence appearing real. When I get a hold of that, then I can grow up the courage I need to walk past that fear into the life that God has designed for me. And God has designed a life for me. I can believe the faults or I can believe his truth. Courage lies in the direction that I choose. When I walk it out in God, I walk out a courageous, bold, prosperous, overflowing life. Growing Hope Radio needs to take a quick break, but when we return, I'm going to share more ideas that grew up from my talk with C.A. Marks on how to grow up courage in my life and yours. Are you a writer searching for your place in this ever-changing publishing industry? We've been there, and we want to help you navigate these waters. Peculiar Productions began as a support for authors between authors. Along the way, we've met and connected with editors, designers, and formatters. In each of the new connections, we discovered hearts hungry to pursue their passions. Peculiar Productions is a new company that seeks to help individuals match their unique gifts and talents with the needs of others. As a writer, you can pursue the indie path with our help and encouragement. Learn more at www.pqproductions.com. That's www.pecuproductions.com. This is the Growing Hope Review. Each week I will share with you one of my favorite Bible studies, books, movies, or even television shows, and I will tell you why it moves me to share. Although I know that we will each get something different out of the things that we encounter, I also know that when we are moved by words, others are likely to be moved as well. This week's review is on The Hiding Place, a book by Corey Ten Boom. It tells the story of Corey and her sister and many others that lived in Holland during the Second World War. 
the Ten Boom family hit Jews and other underground workers in their home. Eventually, Corey and her sister Betsy wound up in a concentration camp together. It can be hard to imagine that a story of such a dark time could provide hope and encouragement, but the girls learned to grow light even in the darkest places. Betsy saw the imprisonment as a possibility. She told Corey, Corey, if people can be taught to hate, then they can be taught to love. When you connect with words that find hope and possibility, even in these circumstances, then it becomes easier to imagine that anything is possible in your own life. Corey Ten Boom's story reminded me that the darkest times do not dictate what I see and what I live, that hope can grow even where darkness tries to crush, that possibilities are there even when problems seem to be the only thing. This has been the Growing Hope Review. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. Welcome back to Growing Hope Radio. I am still Catherine Lang, your faithful and faith-filled rainbows and lollipops host, even though I struggle with finding my inner courage at times. (laughs) Yes, I am extroverted by nature. I love being around people and in front of people, but I also have to be courageous in stepping out, especially right now. Because I'm not where I know I should be health-wise. See, I'm a little more round than I would like to be. And I try not to imagine all the negative things that people are saying or thinking about me because of that. And yes, I am bold by nature or by design or by choice. I'm not sure. (laughs) Partly because of my stubbornness. But shh, don't tell anyone. I'm trying to keep that part of my personality a secret. But it takes courage to stand up against they. They have a way of making things difficult if you don't go along to get along. And yes, I am a possibility thinker. I have big dreams and big goals, but it takes courage to step up into them. And that is where my courage growing has been lacking. Before the break, I shared with you the five things that I mined from a visit with C.A. Marks of moxiebeautiful.com. She is bold, and she is brave, and she is encouraging, and I stole all sorts of information from her. So I took these five tips from her, and I'm working to grow them up in my walk. One, courage grows up in an honest place. Two, courage grows up in and through relationships. Uh, Three, courage grows up in an open heart. Four, courage grows up when it is something more than self. And five, courage grows up when actions are taken. So, yeah, also mentioned an acronym to me. How, H-O-W, how do I grow up courage? By having honesty, openness, and willingness. So, today, we are talking about the how of growing up courage. Courage only grows up in an honest place. And let's be honest, (laughs) when we're not where we want to be, we really don't want to have it held up in our faces. That's one of the reasons I have become adept at avoiding cameras. It's almost like I had gained a sixth sense until there were smartphones. Now there's a camera and a video camera around every turn. It's become almost impossible to avoid seeing myself. So I had to be honest about myself. And about what I was seeing. And that's not easy. It actually takes courage, to be honest. So that is one of the reasons that honesty helps to grow up courage. You just use a little bit of courage to be honest. And in using a little bit of courage, you grow up a little more. The second thing, the second tip, is that courage grows up in and through relationships. Sometimes it is the encouragement that is fed into me from the relationships like visiting with C.A. Marks or uh, hanging out with the 10-Minute Novelists. But sometimes it is in facing down those negative relationships that grows up the courage in my life. Now, both play a part, although the positive is way more enjoyable than the negative. The third tip is that courage grows up in a heart open to that growth. 
I have to be open to recognizing the choices that have brought me to this point. I have to be open to the choices that I will need to make to get me to a different direction. I have to be open. And most importantly, I have to be open to hearing from others about what is and isn't working in my life. I think that this is where God likes to show his sense of humor to me <laughs> because all too often this direction comes from the words of my boys and I hear from them the points for my life. Uh, there's nothing quite like the random comment of a nine-year-old hitting you square between the eyes to make you look up and take notice. But then maybe that's why God uses their words. If I wasn't open to hearing them, though, it wouldn't matter from where they came. The fourth tip is that courage grows up in something that goes beyond self. I am more courageous when I am not thinking about me or about my limited wants and desires, and I see the blessings and benefits for the others around me. I would love to hide in my room and read novels and watch movies all the time, but I would be of no benefit to others. I suspect also that before too long, I would get to the point where I was of no benefit to even myself. Selfishness is never a place of courage. And finally, the fifth tip is that courage grows up in action. I can talk the talk, but until I walk the walk, it will only be words. I used to talk the talk about taking the steps to be a speaker. And I spoke at, I spoke at small groups because I had a fear of microphones. Not because I was afraid of speaking to large groups, but I didn't like the technology. Technology had caused me to hold back the talk of being a speaker or hold back from pursuing that. And it would still be holding me back if I had not taken the first step to speak in an online webinar and it required a phone. And that gave me a little more courage to speak in front of a larger group, live and in person, with a microphone. And it turns out the worst fear I had came true. <laughs> the mic screeched at me and at the audience. And I didn't die. The world didn't explode. Everything didn't end right then and there. I even found a way to make a joke that fit right into my talk. The fear was false. And facing it down gave me the courage to face anything when it came to speaking. I've used handheld mics, lapel mics, and even my own digital recorder. It started, though, with the action of stepping into that fear. So how do you grow up courage? With honesty, openness, and willingness. Because courage grows up in an honest place. And courage grows up in relationships. And courage grows up in an open heart. And courage grows up outside of self. And courage grows up in action. Growing Hope Radio needs to take one more break. But when we come back, I'll share some foundational scripture with you that will help hold up these tips for growing courage. Because I know that each of us has a unique path that we have to pursue when it comes to growing up courage. But the Word of God is the best way to found each of these tips in pursuit of that growth. The Word of God is unchanging. And if I can hold fast to the words of God and I can feed them into my heart and my mind, then they make it possible for me to grow up the courage I need to walk out in this world. I'm not of this world, but I'm in this world. And that means I have to have the courage to walk out what God has led me to do. And I can only do that if I know what it is. Growing Hope Radio will be back after these brief messages. This is your Growing Hope Scripture Focus. Each week I will share a favorite Bible verse and challenge you to memorize and study that verse over the next seven days. By putting the Word of God in our hearts and in our minds with consistency, the words will settle in and begin to grow fruit that shows forth in our own words and in our actions. This week's verse is Psalm 119, 133, from the Amplified Translation. 
Establish my steps and direct them by means of your word. Let not any iniquity have dominion over me. It all starts with the word of God. If I want solid steps that are going to carry me down the path that I desire, then I have to invest in the word that has the directions for those steps. Each and every word exists in scripture for a reason. It's there to grow me up and to fill me up to overflowing abundance and peace. But it won't get there unless I pick up the word and I read the word. When I read it, then I build up the foundation that keeps the negatives from having a place over me. This has been your Growing Hope Scripture Focus. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. This is Mason Hawks of the United Earth Central Corps. I've encountered an unidentified spacecraft that has refused to answer all attempts to communicate. It has reacted in a hostile manner and launched several combat fighters to engage me. My ship is damaged and I'm not going to make it, so... I've done a memory scan and embedded it in this transmission. Please. I'm not sure how I got here or even where here is. Can you boost the signal? I woke up in the wreckage of a crashed shuttle. Is anyone receiving this? Can anyone out there hear me? The only satellite has been destroyed. My signal's too weak. If you can hear this, you've got to warn Earth. We are being invaded. There's no hope of warning Earth in time. The aliens that shot down my shuttlecraft plan to take over UC territory. The station. I'm stranded on this primitive backwater planet and trapped in some kind of experimental biosuit. We are being attacked by some There's sort of... too many of them. Some sort of shape-changing alien beings. If you are receiving this, please relay the warning to Earth. Stars of the Connery by S.P. Dorning. Ask for it at your local bookstore or order it on Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble today. Audio produced by spiritwave.net. Christian sci-fi and fantasy. Unsterilized, unsafe, unleashed. Welcome back to this final segment of Growing Hope Radio. I am still Catherine Lang, and I am courageously standing as your rainbows and lollipops host. Because let's face it, in this world, staying hopeful and positive takes courage. Now, I have been called peculiar because of my positive stance, and I hold that title up with pride. After all, we are called to be a peculiar people, and I have been told that I'm not normal because I choose to find the possibilities in life, and I have even been told that I was just too happy. I suspect that I will hear it all again, possibly before the day is over. Now, before the break, I shared with you five tips that C.A. Marks of MoxieBeautiful.com had shared with me for how to grow up courage. One, courage grows up in an honest place. I have to be honest with myself and with others if I'm going to walk out a courageous life. Two, courage grows up in and through relationships. I will not make it on my own. We're designed to be in relationships, and we are designed for relationships. Three, courage grows up in an open heart. I have to be open to what I've done, what I need to do, and the wisdom and guidance of others. Four, courage grows up when it's more than about self, because selfishness can never be courageous. And five, courage grows up when I choose to take action. It is moving beyond where I am to where I want to be. And remember how. H-O-W is honesty, openness, and willingness. Now, Psalm 27 provides a foundational reason that I should have courage. In verse 1, the psalmist, the psalmist reminds us that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He goes on in verse 4 and 5 to say, One thing I have desired of the Lord. Then I will seek after him, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple for the time, in times of trouble, and that he'll hide me in his pavilion, in the secret place of his tabernacle. There he shall hide me, and he shall set me up on a rock. And the psalmist ends 
uh, Psalm 27 with this. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So when I focus on God and I wait on the peace that he provides in my life, then I will be strengthened in my heart. That seems simple enough. Now, if I would just practice that simplicity in all aspects of my life, what a difference that would make in my journey. When I know God, when I know what he has told me, and I know it beyond anything the world can say or do, then I can rest in that. In Mark 4, Jesus gets in the boat with his disciples and he tells them, let's pass over to the other side. Let's go to the other side. So Jesus has told his disciples that they're going to the other side, but then the circumstances try to convince them otherwise. The disciples listen to the wind and the waves and go wake up Jesus and cry out, do you not care that we're going to perish? And Jesus rose up and he told the storm, peace, be still. And it was. Then he turned and said to the disciples, why are you so afraid? And how is it that you have no faith? See, Jesus told them what they were going to do to go to the other side, but they believed the circumstances over the word of their master. Too often, that is my problem. I see the world, and I hear the world, and I believe the world over the word. How do I grow up in my courage against the world? Well, it's simple. Honestly seek the word of God. Be open to the Word of God and be willing to invest what it takes to make the Word of God my natural recourse. In Hebrews, we're directed to focus on God, to focus on the things we have learned and been taught, to focus on the positives and the possibilities. And Hebrew 13, 6 says that we should be boldly proclaiming that the Lord is my helper And I will not fear what man or what the world shall do to me. The world is trying to convince me of its truths. But the world is just false evidence appearing real. God is the truth. And his word stands up against anything that the world tries to throw at me. When I grasp that understanding, then I'm ready to take on the world. Thank you so much for joining me for this courageously honest episode of Growing Hope Radio. I would appreciate your thoughts on this Growing Up journey. You can share with me through my website at www.katherinelang.com forward slash contact or you can send me an email at radio at katherinelang.com. You can also find me all around social media as Katherine C. Lang. On Facebook, I'm the Katherine C. Lang. On Twitter, I'm at Catherine C. Lang. On Google Plus, it's plus Catherine C. Lang. And on YouTube, it's the Catherine C. Lang. Also, over at Twitter, there'll be a Twitter chat every Monday following the Monday broadcast of Growing Hope Radio. That means that at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, we are going to be Growing Up Hope on Twitter. Growing Hope Radio will be back here next week. Same Rainbow's Place and same Lollipop's time. Until then, let's connect. Find me around the internet. Connect with me on the website. Let's begin to grow up relationships. They are going to help us grow up to the place of being honestly and courageously bold in this journey that God has designed for each of our lives. Remember, your way and my way may not be the same way, but together we can be stronger and and bolder in the pursuit of what it is that we're supposed to do. Together, we can grow up the courage we need to take that next step down that path. Be blessed and be a blessing. Thanks for joining us this week for Growing Hope with Katherine Lang. Katherine is a leader in encouragement, a networking specialist, and your Hope Smith extraordinaire. To learn more about Growing Hope, visit Catherine's website at www.katherinelang.com. That's www.k-a-t-h-r-y-n-l-a-n-g.com. Catherine is also available to speak or teach at your next event. Use the contact form on the website or email Catherine with queries or questions at contactus at 
If you are looking for more hope and inspiration for your week, you can sign up for the Reflections column that mails out each Sunday at www.katherinelang.com slash reflections. And be sure to join us back here each week for Growing Hope, where Catherine shares her heart for encouragement and her vision for hope. Until next week, keep watching for that place where your heart is open to pursue the extraordinary.